Hi everyone, I'm Nathan, and this video is a quick update to a video I just released titled something like, Should You Run Serum Visions or Anticipate? Therefore, if you haven't watched that video, don't watch this one. Um, I'll put a link to that video in the description, but don't watch this one yet because it just won't make any sense to you. Now in that video, I talked about Serum Visions and Anticipate, and I'm not going to discuss that here. But what I am going to discuss is a concept I, I talked a bit about called Tempo. Um, and it's not that I did a bad job of explaining it, but I felt like I could have been a little bit more thorough and included a few more points that just kind of further encapsulated what tempo is. Um, okay, so let's talk about tempo. Um, tempo is, the concept of tempo is very closely related to mana and it's something that can be generated um, and something that you can gain an advantage from. Um, so one way to think of tempo is the potential for a deck to do something that furthers its game plan um, or furthers it impacts the outcome of a game in a positive way for for itself. Um, so you can you can generate tempo in many different ways but being able to capitalize on it is something that that's what really matters when it comes to tempo and some decks are better than doing that than others and some decks can can't do it at all so because it's potential or because potential is closely tied to tempo you can look at a spell like summer bloom as an example and what the reason that Summer Bloom, what Summer Bloom does, by the way, is it's one in a green, and it says you may play three extra lands this turn, I believe. So what Summer Bloom does is basically accelerate, it has the potential to accelerate one deck, one deck's mana, ahead of the other um, by a lot. Sorry, I had to deal with that call. Um, so Summer Bloom generates a tempo advantage because basically you get much more many more lands in play so now you're able to do something much larger than what your opponent can do much more powerful you've accelerated ahead uh, or you can just do many different things um, now of course if you play a bunch of lands you probably don't have a lot of cards in hand but that's not the point um, the point is you you are you are essentially gaining a tempo advantage now if you then can't do anything you're not taking advantage or you're not capitalizing on the tempo advantage that you've created. Another way that decks can generate tempo is, you know, you, you have to look at a spell, every spell that you draw as the potential to do something that positively impacts the outcome of the game. And this is why it's tied to mana, because you need mana to do that. Now, one concept is that, you know, if, if each spell does something to advance your game, if you can do more of those things more quickly than you can your opponent, um, you can potentially win faster. Um, so one concept of tempo is being able to cast one spell a turn as opposed to just one. Now one way that that might happen is let's pretend that you're piloting a Jeskai deck and you have an opponent that's piloting an Abzan deck. And I'm going to use two examples because it's not always casting two spells a turn. Let's say that you each have four mana and they go to cast the Siege Rhino. They're investing all of their their turn's potential to positively advance the game in their favor into this one spell. Well, if you can remand it with a spell that costs two, you're generating a tempo advantage because you're, you're using a two-mana spell. First and foremost, you're stopping their turn you are negating their potential to impact their game. They're doing nothing with their turn now. Their turn had this potential, and you stopped it. The way that you would capitalize on this on this tempo advantage is if you can do something, not in response, but if you can do something with the rest of your mana because your spells are cheaper. So now if you reman their spell, and then at their end step, you lightning helix them, well, on their turn, they did nothing, and you created a six-point life swing. You reduced their to their life total by three, and you um, increased yours by three, total of six. So that's an example of how casting more than one spell a turn 
is a way to generate tempo and capitalize on it on the on the generated tempo advantage and capitalize on the advantage you created another way is and we'll use a similar similar example is um and i i know that these came from the video so i'm rehashing this somewhat but i feel like i'm saying it a little more succinctly if you have a geist of saint trapped in play um let's say that their answer to it their way to further their game plan is a to stop their geist but also to put a creature in play that kills you and let's say they try to play the siege rhino well if you remand it you're negating what they're doing just like we talked before um you're they're actually doing nothing with their turn now they haven't th this opportunity that they have to do something in their turn has been negated if you're able to then attack them for six you maybe maybe you didn't on the following turn maybe you didn't capitalize that turn uh, by casting more than one spell a turn but you still have capitalized on the tempo advantage by denying what they were going to be able to do that was going to interfere with your plan you've disrupted them and now you're gonna bash them for six so that's another example it doesn't always have to be putting a bunch of lands into play it doesn't always have to be playing more than one spell a turn um but generating tempo can mean lots of things but really it's the ability of a deck to capitalize on it that is important and you know in the old amulet bloom decks i guess they're not old they could still be around they cast a primeval titan mm -hmm. um in delver decks they get an early threat in and they disrupt what the opponent's doing um the the jeskai geist deck and as i said in the original video is not as equipped to, to generate tempo and take advantage of it as say something like um delver of secrets and a big part of that is because our spells are more expensive but that's not to say that that deck can't so let me think real quick if i left anything out there there is i guess one other there is another point i want to make there is there is something else i want to say um tempo doesn't last forever If that Abzan pilot casts a Siege Rhino and you remand it, and then on your turn don't do anything, and then they take their turn and cast Siege Rhino and it comes into the battlefield, well, when you created that tempo advantage by remanding their Siege Rhino, you had no way to capitalize on it. You technically created a tempo advantage because they did nothing and now you can do something, but if you don't do anything, um, you haven't capitalized on it. And when they take their next turn, that tempo advantage is mostly gone. That that it kind of doesn't exist anymore. Um, so that's one point I wanted to mention. Yeah, I gave it some thought, and that is more or less it. Magic is an infinitely complex game, and you could spend a long time talking about the concept of tempo and all of the ways that it could be generated. And I could include many more examples, but my... I, my, my goal isn't to be, you know, fully comprehensive. It, it's really just to um, help you understand, help you understand that, that, that basic concept if you hadn't already. Um, so I, I hope I did that. Um, there were just a few things, like I said, I left out. I, I, I know last time I said the word tempo a lot when I meant to say tempo advantage, and I didn't discuss how tempo could be generating by casting more than one spell a turn um but but i think that this this probably puts a, a good cap on it so anyway as always guys thank you for watching uh please consider subscribing to my channel i would greatly appreciate it and i look forward to uh the next video talk to you guys soon